from our point of view, an important role, uh, which is, uh, as we said, we look into people as assets. So uh, the more you know them, the more you can get a lot of potential and uh, skills and uh, creative ideas, uh, new touches, new flavors. Uh, and this we have uh, uh, experienced with so many uh, newcomers, uh, especially young people. Especially young people, they were really amazing. Uh, you find in, in, uh, uh, a lot of potential, a lot of. Uh, uh, they were really uh, awesome. The ones, uh, at least we have experience with, there are so many, the vast majority of them, they are having uh, creative ideas, uh, uh, they're really open-minded, they want to do something, they are uh, motivated, uh, self-driven. So, uh, uh, and here comes, this is the real fuel to the or creative social uh, uh, creative enterprises, because this is what they need. They need the new, fresh ideas or the new flavors, and this is what contributes. So the organization from themselves, they have the experience and they know the way. So the shortcut, and then when they get the uh, the, the newcomers, uh, uh, they contribute. So it's a win-win really situation, and it's really important for the social creative inter enterprises uh, to be like a open collaborative spaces for, for, for this category. We've started our organization from scratch with our own resources, so we can show someone else how we did it. Then it, it could be a model. Different uh, projects like Magda's Hotel in Austria, like uh, what uh, the uh, cooperatives in Italy do or what the uh, cooperatives in Spain do. So we have cooperated a lot before because we, we belong to this ecosystem. And our example here, well common, is a practical answer to your question. We are caring about hosting, about non-formal education, about preparation for their inclusion, social inclusion. And now we will start more intensively uh, how they can find a job in a country that suffers from unemployment. So the idea of a social enterprise and we have seen this working in other European countries, is more proper for the job integration of refugees and migrants. Uh, social and economic empowerment, uh, they will rely less on uh, AIDS and uh, they will decrease the, the violence and the aggressive behaviors uh, as the, the refugee will feel more integrated within the community and they, they feel that they're uh, more self-confidence and they're uh, contributing to the society they're living in. Uh, we had uh, an, uh, a social enterprise, uh, founder of a social enterprise in Utopia called Ambar al Khiyatin, which is a swimming factory and we have the Lebanese and Syrian community as women empowerment project for women, Lebanese women and Syrian women. And uh, I think that the social enterprise could be very helpful uh, based on our experience and based on other experience for sure. Uh, could be very helpful to uh, create more job opportunities. Uh, especially when you have social enterprise, so there is a cause. And based on this cause, uh, more, the people maybe more will support those kind of uh, companies or social enterprise. The killing point here is the language. So the main barrier in, uh, which face the refugees is the language. If they can uh, overcome the language, that will be easier for them to access the work market. Some of them are uh, uh, consultant who are 50 years old, it's very difficult for him to to achieve this high mark in, in IELTS. Licensing, it's very uh, hard, hard for medics. As I said, many, uh, many professions like carpenter, electrician, uh, uh, plumbers, they can't practice their job here because again, they have to go for uh, certain certificates and licensing. And when they go to uh, colleges to obtain this, again, they came to the first barrier with the English language. They have to spend a long time understand, understanding uh, and uh, learning English so they can 
uh, get admission in one of those uh, uh, program for uh, for to learn profession. However, they they know the profession, but they have to to get this certificate so they can practice this uh, profession. For Lebanon, uh, Syrian refugees were allowed to work until two th earlier 2015 until the national authority suspended such a right. Uh, now Syrians are uh, looking for job in that in the informal sectors. And as we know, in the informal sectors, uh, uh, let's say labor rights are few and uh, Syrians are more exposed to exploitation and uh, abuse at their work. Uh, uh, now Syrians are, uh, are forced to, to, to sign a pledge uh, not to work and to, to, to rely only on humanitarian uh, uh, humanitarian aid and in case uh, in case uh, they they will they will have a sponsorship or uh, sponsorship or um, uh, uh, work per permission they will they will uh, they will be named as uh, a migrant their start will be a migrant worker instead of refugee uh, despite that UNHCR are still counting them as a refugee they only can work in the third sector job like agriculture, uh, uh, construction, and cleaning services. And as as we said, the the the, the uh, abuse there is is more uh, uh, there's more risk for abuse. And uh, one of the challenges coming they're facing that uh, more tension because of the Syrian employment is. Uh, is seen or faced between the Lebanese and the Syrian because for the Lebanese, Syrians are taking their job opportunities and uh, Syrian will have less uh, ability to integrate within the host community because of the tension. Here in Germany, some of the barriers in the labor market are, first of all, the language. You have to have the language. The next one is the certificates. In Germany, we love certificates. We love papers. So they always say, so what did you learn in your country? Um, and we cannot explain to the, enterprise, to the entrepreneurs and, and the people that when you go uh, on your way from Syria <laughs> to Germany that you don't, that the last thing you think about is about your certificate. Plus we have that thing, we have the dual system in Germany and that's um, only in Germany and Switzerland and I think they're starting it in France now and it's not known in the other countries. So they come here and, and talk about university, but they learn like cooking in university. But in Germany, you don't learn cooking in university. You learn that w by working in a restaurant. So that's a very big barrier. The next barrier for the labor market is the statue of residence. Not every refugee can go to work. You first of all have to have your uh, approved statue of residence, you, you ask for it and as long as it's not worked on, you cannot do anything. So, and it takes very long time in Germany um, to really, to, for the decision makers to say you're allowed to stay here in Germany. You know, so, it's a very, very big barrier. If they don't have legal papers, it's impossible to work. Not only to create something from their own, but to work generally. The laws has to change. If we want to make this happen, it really needs a reform in all of these things. Mm. Because right now the reality is, okay, some people, they are working, they are working legally. So actually the, the state is, uh, is, uh, is losing money, is losing uh, all these profits that the worker can give. So this is also a problem. This is also a problem of uh, Greek society, and Greek politicians, and Greek government, and uh, the whole system. So somehow they need to uh, make something different to make some differences. That's not only refugees uh, have barriers there. <laughs> Everybody in Germany has barriers to uh, settle up uh, enterprises, social, because it's very bu uh, bureaucratic. There are uh, uh, consequences for the language, uh, which means uh, the ability to read different uh, laws and regulations, uh, 
getting to read uh, where the right information is because not everything is available in their own home language or in English. Uh, 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 the, the way to know who to ask. So they depend mainly on uh, the uh, 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 on transferring the knowledge from one to another among themselves. So and there is a high risk there because we saw it from our experience. Uh, if someone misunderstood something by mistake, not by intentionally, uh, or something happened to this person, so this is her or his experience, and transferred it to others. The others think that this is the default. Uh, so, and we think, or we see that this mainly because of the language. And secondly, the segregation, either psychologically or within, uh, yeah, geographically. Again, funding. That's one barrier. Another barrier, most of the things refugees we do are categorized non-mainstream. And when something is non-mainstream, no one, no, no, nobody wants to invest in it because they, they, somehow they feel like maybe they won't get a return, a profit out of it because it's not mainstream. Maybe also start uh, giving non-mainstream its value, it, it, whether it's mainstream or non-mainstream, art is art in, at the end of the day. Even for Greeks, very hard. They can go, you cannot go to the bank and ask for a loan. You will never receive it. If you are a refugee, then maybe you are not able to open a bank account. When, if you start something, then there's high taxation, for example. Then you don't have access to alternative mechanism for funding. Eh? If you want to find, let's say, 30,000 euros to open a shop, how you can find it? If you don't have a house, if you don't have uh, cash money in your bank account, then you will never uh, receive uh, a loan. So this is the biggest issue. Okay, there are other obstacles like the language issues or things like this, but the biggest problem is access to funding that is proper for these vulnerable groups. Unemployed persons, refugees, migrant, migrants living many years here. Uh, most of the people are asylum seekers, so they have no um, concrete plan of how there is no concrete plan of how long they're going to to stay in Greece and since it is just uh, the uh, just a, a station uh, for their for, uh, for their journey so uh, this creates problem uh, all in all the legal aspects of creating uh, an, in an, enterprise. an enterprise in the Greek context we we have to be also trained in that. I mean, what is the uh, if there if there are any legal uh, ways of doing that? So there has to be. This is also new for us because because of the situation. Uh, in Lebanon, we have the the role uh, the the law of uh, labors and uh, companies. Uh, for sure, they have barriers uh, because uh, they need partners to create any companies in Lebanon. There is no there is no law for social enterprise in Lebanon, and this could be one of the policy makers that could help in the future to have a law for the policy makers in, uh, for uh, the social enterprises in Lebanon. Oh, there are many. Now here, I mean, we have seen many initiatives, uh, people providing services uh, by apps, using uh, smartphones, uh, because they see that everyone now, I mean, all, all ages, they are interested in this. Uh, some others through social media things, uh, uh, some, uh, there are so many, I mean, we, saw, we really uh, so many uh, uh, ideas and, and, and really creative uh, uh, cool, uh, how we can say, also technological uh, things. I mean, you don't want to name specifically one or two because there's so many, uh, but uh, this is what uh, we saw. Things related uh, to health, uh, issues, th things related to uh, services in general. Uh, uh, things also related to uh, uh, using media and social media to, uh, to raise more the knowledge about the language and understanding it and the social norms in a very creative way, like a comedy show, but so many, really, I mean, so many things. We created several uh, issues of artisanat, 
that uh, that are uh, touristic uh, materials uh, for uh, through the Amber Al Khiatin uh, social enterprise, and now we are creating another uh, uh, social enterprise which is called the Trablus Ahla. Uh, that uh, uh, any kind of um, uh, uh, hand handcrafts uh, that uh, we, we are trying to getting the handcrafts, Lebanese handcrafts and the Syrian handcrafts, and uh, uh, doing together uh, several type of handcrafts and creating a package and having marketing for those packages to be sell in Lebanon and outside Lebanon. So this, uh, those uh, handcrafts is, are very important because they are very traditional and uh, it's like the tarbush, for example. The last one who do the tarbush in Lebanon is living in Tripoli and he closed his uh, small industry. So now we are trying to support him uh, uh, to be part of this handcrafts uh, initiative to uh, sell their product and reopen. At the same time, there are several Syrian refugees who came to Lebanon and they are experts in uh, some handcrafts in Syria. So, and we want to make something joint together.